It's Bourbon Blog Live. We're chatting today with my good friend, Wes Henderson. You know him. He's a founder of one of our favorite brands, Angels Envy. He's joining us live from Louisville. How's it going, Wes? Going great, Tom. Always good to, to visit, and uh, I'm excited. Got a lot of fun stuff to talk about tonight. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, it's we've had you on. Uh, it was a little while back during it, the, as we started Bourbon Blog Live as the pandemic was happening, but you guys have been... Uh, You've been doing a lot since then. You've got a lot of cool new uh, things in the works. What's what's been going on your way? We're gonna we're gonna taste the Miz, Mizanara here in just a little while. But what what else has been happening at Angels Envy? Well, I mean, we've been busy like everyone else. A lot of times busy doing nothing because of my wings have been clipped because of COVID. Um, you know, I travel about seventy percent of the time, so. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm literally lost, uh, but but in that time we've been able to right. spend time working on innovations and 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 you know get the Mizanura finish ready to go and get that out the door. So you know it, it life has changed for all of us. You know there's no doubt about it. I look forward to being back out on the road spreading the bourbon the bourbon gospel. That's what I do. Wings have been clipped, but it's still you're within those uh, within the boundaries we're working on now. You're still letting those wings do a lot of great magic in the world of a bourbon and whiskey, and uh, we'll taste them as an art. A lot of people are joining us. We want to make sure as you're watching this, tell your friends, fellow bourbon lovers, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, share this because we all are getting to try uh, virtually, you're watching uh, me and Wes try the Mizanara live for the first live preview of this. So mm -hmm. Mizanara cask, what is the Mizanara cask? Uh, the Mizanara cask, uh, we, we were fortunate enough to get these, these barrels. Uh, we had to mortgage our homes and our children to get them. But you know we're we're, we're finishing bourbon and, and pretty special, right? very special, very special. It, yes. wasn't, it wasn't so hard to give up the kids. The house was hard to give up, <laughs> uh, not so much the kids. But you know it's two hundred year old oak. I mean it's, this this oak has been so this oak itself has been around for two hundred years. It has been, and and uh, wow. it's phenomenal. We, it's a crazy expensive to get, but you know we'd always wanted to do. You know, to just backtrack a little bit of history. So, you know, at Brown Foreman, when Dad was at Brown, Brown Foreman, they had a very close alliance with Suntory, you know, uh, the, and Yamazaki and Hibiki and, you know, all the, all their brands. And the reason for that was is Suntory distributed Brown Foreman in Japan. Right. So Dad would go to Japan to talk about uh, Old Forester. After he created Woodford, he would go to Japan and, and talk about Woodford. So Dad was very fond of, Japanese whiskey, which he should be because it's great stuff. Right. And so we had always wanted to do a Japanese oak finish. We might have done it sooner, except for Suntory bought Beam. So, you know, as far as getting them to give us Japanese oak, which they would have done, I'm sure, before the acquisition, you know, we had to change route a little bit. But and it's founders. This is our Founders Day release. So we're, we're approaching the, the 10th anniversary of the day we put the first bourbon in export wine barrels. That's amazing. I can't believe it's been 10 years. I know. Isn't it crazy? It's wild. It, it really is. It, it's a blur. I, I, it, I have no other way to explain yeah. it. it. It's been a blur, just like it has been for you as you've seen this industry grow and you've grown with it. But so to honor dad and honor his love of Japanese whiskey and Japanese culture, we decided that the Mizuner Oak finish would be the best way to do it. And that's how we landed there. Wow. And this and Mizanara for people who don't know about it, it's usually used for what? What? Where do we usually see this? Uh, this very special oak. Japanese whiskeys. I mean, you know, you see them. Uh, Yamazaki is a, is a one of my favorite Japanese whiskey. Hibiki, and uh, Yamazaki uses uh, a blend of, of whiskeys aged in different types of barrels. But the Japanese oak is probably the most distinctive. If you take Yamazaki, sing them all, and deconstruct it, and and I've been I've been blessed to be able to do this where. My friends at Suntory have, have given me samples of the Japanese whiskey finished in, or, or aged in each of the different barrels. I think there are seven of them, seven or eight. But the, the one that's the most distinctive, if you look at the Yamazaki, is the Japanese oak uh, aging. So it's, it's, there's nothing uh, like it out there. So when you taste this bourbon, it adds a, a dimension that, that you really can't get any other way. We're going to give it a taste here in just a moment. But again, for those watching uh, questions, ask them to uh, Wes or myself um, tonight. Ask them down below. Tweet back. Ask us below on Facebook, Twitter. You're watching bourbonbloglive.com. We do live shows every night. So make sure you like, uh, like the video, follow the social media channel you're following. 
and definitely bookmark Bourbon Blanc Live because we do many more uh, great live tastings. Uh, and uh, and ask us ask us about what we're tasting. Ask us something you've always wanted to know about Angel's Envy uh, with Wes Henderson. I can remember Wes when you were reaching out to me uh, about a year before you were launched Angel's Envy, telling me about it. I never had heard of anything like it in the bourbon world, and uh, I was very honored to have Bourbon Blog be the first to review the bourbon it, ten years ago. So it's especially you know special, especially special mm -hmm. for me to taste the the Mizanara with you and. Um, you guys really, back then and 10 years ago, nobody was really doing this much in bourbon, were they, these finishes? No, nobody really was. I mean, if you, if you go back to like the Jim Beam Masters Collection back in the late 80s, I think, they were really the first people to do it with American, with, with bourbon. And it just wasn't the right time. I mean, it was decent. Uh, you know, uh, it was very expensive. People were not going to pay $100 or more for a bourbon back then. So, um, so fast forward, and we when we started doing it, Tom, you know, there was a little bit of noise about finishing bourbon in another barrel. Right? You know, is it real? Is it still bourbon? Is it, you know, whatever? I'm like, no, it's not bourbon. It's bourbon finished in port wine barrels. You know, and now you don't hear that type of noise because it's so common. Once once they tasted, they they probably backed off a little hopefully back then didn't they when they tasted it yeah i mean it, it, it was definitely different and, and right. people who are really rabid bourbon you know fans you know they're like eh, i don't know about this but i think we've won most people over um you know you know one, one thing you could do with finishing is is you could take bourbon that was eh, and finish it you know to to, to make it drinkable Right. And I think that that because of our credibility and because of our, our heritage and lineage in the bourbon industry, everyone knew that to, to have good finished bourbon, you've got to start with good bourbon. You, you have know? to start with good bourbon. That's what has always been your goal is to start with the best exactly. bourbon. Exactly. And so, so finishing is not a way to cover up bourbon that's subpar. It's a way to enhance great bourbon. And that's what we did. We just, like I said a minute ago, it's, it's not just Kentucky bourbon or it's Kentucky bourbon finished in. Right. You know, or in port wine barrels or finished in Mizzenor oak barrels. Do you have, that, do you have one of those? Uh, and I have uh, some of the liquid. Do you have one of those bottles, the Mizzenor uh, bottles with you? We're, he's going to, he's going to. <laughs> well, no, I I I I'm gonna, here. What I am going to show you here after I yelled across the house to my wife. Um, <laughs> She's in her pink days. I'll put her on the screen. She's going to get the bottle. It's an amazing bottle. We wrote about it on Bourbon Blog. If you all have a chance to check it out, it's a, it's a beautiful looking bottle. Um, we're about to see. I wanted to excite and entice everyone. We're, oh, look at this. This is, uh, so this is, look at that. Here. So this is the crystal bottle. Nice. Look at that. How beautiful that and is. And if you look at the, 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 the stopper and everything like right. that, it has wings on the stopper also. It's right. a crystal. Uh, it can be reused also. So, um, you know, obviously put Angel's Envy in it again. But if you look at the the wings on the back, the, wow. the way that they're, um, that's actually part of the glass. That's and part of the crystal. And it's an amazing stopper that really marks the uh, tenure. Mm -hmm. And again, very limited. Uh, how do people get this bottle and about how many are being made? Yeah, a couple things. Um, first thing you want to do is go to join our, our, our we've got a, a group called 500 Main. And if you go to look up Angels MBR 500 Main, and you can join 500 Main and you will get a link to purchase one of these. It's just, they're going to be gone in a heartbeat. There's only 1,200 bottles. 1,200. I think the link opens Thursday. So go right now and join 500 Main. Yep. Make sure you do that. And I'm uh, going to stick that up there. It's on angelsenvy.com, but make sure right. if you got to, you got to register there to actually be even considered, or how does that work? How does the whole? Yeah, that's the only way you can get it. it you, yeah. you have to pick it up in Louisville. You can reserve the bottle. You can buy the bottle. Uh, right. And you have to come to Louisville to pick it up. It's only going to be released there at the ministry. There's and, that link. Oh, there you go. There it is. So as soon as, as, soon as it that? becomes active, it's kind of like first come, first serve. Everybody who's first gets one bottle. Is that it? That's it. Did you put that up there? Did you do I that? I did. Damn, that's Ooh, good. Magic. I know it's a, it's amazing though. This is part of the thing my hands are doing down here. It's it's filling whiskey glasses, sniffing, and then putting up links. That's I don't want to know what your hands are doing down there, Tom. I really don't. <laughs> I wasn't gonna ask. I just saw shit happening and stuff going on, and uh, I'm just like, you know, but the fewer questions I ask, the better off. <laughs> it's it's part of the magic of whiskey in the hands. Here, so there here. it is. Five hundred main angels in. So go to that site, join it, and then. What time does it happen at midnight or what happened? What time does it happen? I don't know. 
Okay. Uh, so really just join it. that link. They'll tell you the day, yeah. time. You I think it's down, it. down. Uh, maybe someone will stick it up there, I'm sure. If I were to guess, I would say in the morning, but you know, I mean, uh, you'd think I'd know, but I, I you think I would have figured, I, I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, I can. And, and, you know, some great questions being asked down here. Uh, people uh, right away are saying uh, they love your, your rum finished. Um, thank you for that, Frank. Uh, Walter asking, is it in Indiana? And again, the only place yeah. that you can get this is uh, you have to come to the distillery. You have to be ready to go with like my hands, the quick hands down here to click and buy that. Um, someone's asking, and, and I'm sure I'm sure there are there are mechanisms that are being in place to make sure that uh, someone's asking down here about bots, if bots would try to buy these up, but I'm sure there's mechanisms in place to make sure it's a, a fair process. When, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you've, you've got to complete the purpose, so unless a bot's got a credit card and You'd probably have to be really good at this. Someone's asking this, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, of course, I guess bots can do anything, but uh, right. they maybe crash your system. But I think we're going to have so many people try to buy this that it's going to be a little crazy anyway. But we, you have to complete a purchase. You to, have to complete the purchase. That's. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. I want to make yeah. sure I filled all good, these questions. Good question. Yeah, just so make sure you're ready there with the credit card. Be quick, and probably within a few minutes, um, it will actually. Um, yeah, it'll be gone. Gone. But no matter what, uh, let's let's try it. Let's let's try it out. I want to uh, taste yeah. it with you, and yeah. then tell me kind of the the process that you all went through to bring this. And again, we'll leave that link up there for another moment or two, just to make sure everybody knows. Go to Five Hundred Main Angels oh. Envy to join, and uh, and tell us down below what's your favorite way to drink Angels Envy is. Is it the uh, is it the rye? Is it the bourbon? Is it cast drink? Tell us down below if there's a cocktail you like. Uh, with Angels Envy, there's a lot of cocktails I've had with you over the years, Wes, that have been amazing. Um, several months ago, well, it was actually several months before the pandemic. Uh, we were there, and your mixologist in Louisville was doing some really cool stuff. And uh, you guys do a great job there. So let's. Uh, they're they're at, the, at the distillery. They're like the mad scientists of the cocktail world. Yeah. They they create stuff that you know I. I we have so you know we do all of our own ingredients. Uh, you know, you look behind the bar. We make our own bitters, our own syrups, our own infusions. Yeah. And you know, you look behind the bar, and there's rows and rows of this stuff. Uh, I don't even know if all of it's legal, but um, you know, it. Uh, <laughs> who know? I don't really ask any questions. I'm just like, it's really good stuff. So, uh, but anyway, so let's get back to the Mizunura. You know, this is finished two years in Japanese oak. It's yes, two years. So bourbon, six or seven year old bourbon. So how old the bourbon six or seven? You're right, and then another two wow. years on the Mizunura. So that you really started this process like like this was like nine years ago, eight nine years yep. ago. Started this. Yep. Wow. And the question is, we didn't know that we were going to make it our, our founders release it right. when we first started it. It just happened to work out that way, and it, the timing was perfect. You know, Dad's connection to Japan was perfect. So wow. you know, what 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 a great way to do it. I'm for, how, I wish he was here to see it. How many? Yeah. How many? total barrels were there that you uh laid this in i don't remember several several barrels yielded the 1200 yeah. so it's a good good several barrels you know the yeah. nose on this uh, immediately i'm getting um there's just there's just a lot happening there's sort of this there uh, is. smoke there's a kind of a honeyed smoke uh there's a lot of depth on the nose uh, what are you getting on the nose you know i mean you you nailed it i mean it, the, the thing of it is is it, it, it and I just sent a text to Kyle to see exactly how many barrels we, um, and the link opens tomorrow, by the way, for 500. The link goes barrels. up tomorrow, so you gotta it join that. Tomorrow, so you gotta do it tonight. Um, Perfect timing. The thing about Japanese oak is, is that there's there's really no way to describe it. It's it's so unique. Mm. And, you know, the notes you gave are, are perfect, Tom. You know, I, it, it's, it, it's hard for me to describe Japanese oak because there's nothing like it. There really isn't. Yeah, there's that, there's the smoke that I got Right, um, honey and smoke. On that first taste, I mean, it's it really goes in directions that I've really never had a, a bourbon go in my mouth before. It's there's a creaminess, there's a smokiness, there's there's a lot happening on this. This is incredible. This is really I, I appreciate that. We're really happy with how it turned out. Um, I, I, you know, it, it, there's a there's a really delicate balance there because the Japanese oak can be overpowering if you let it. Um, I, I do like that smokiness a little bit, and uh, I, I think it's it's technic technically I think it's it's a great whiskey. Creatively, I think it's an even better uh, way that you know the you know how we blended it and how it all turned out. I was really happy with it. Incredible linger, 
uh, on the palate. That that linger is just, it's bold, it's spicy, it starts off kind of creamy, kind of goes sweet. These are the first few tastes. I mean, I'm sure it'll do more things the more I drink of it. But it creamy, sweet, and then there's this big spice. Do you know what proof this is at? I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting what proof this is. About uh, same as Angel's Envy? It, it, it's close. Hold on a minute here. Let me ask Kyle again. Isn't that crazy? It's all right. We are, this is this is part of the beauty of live uh, oh, I love it. TV. And, and you can tell, by, for those of you that, that, that haven't been with me before, you know, I, I this is my life. It's general chaos, you know. I mean, it, right. I don't remember what I had for breakfast this morning. So, um, you know, but but in, in the midst of the chaos, it all kind of pieces together um, really well. You're, you're doing a great job. Again, for all those, those of you, I see quite a few of you just joining Bourbon Blog Lives. Where you're at, we're talking with Wes Henderson, founder Angels Envy, and we're trying the new Mizunara Oak Cask Finish, which is goes on sale live on this link. Uh, I'll put the link back up tomorrow. Uh, make sure you like Bourbon Blog Live, follow where you're following, and then also make sure you become a member of 500 Angels Envy because that link is it's more than just for Mizunara Cask. It's also you give them updates. They can have chances to buy other things too, right? Yeah, any any of these special releases we're doing in our seller collection or our founders collection or whatever, the, the 500 main members get the first shot at those. Right. So it's and we don't spam you. You know, we may send you one email a month or something like that. Uh, we may send you an, an email asking for your social security number and date of birth and bank account information. But you know, just just don't. I'm kidding. That's all right. Uh, <laughs> but in uh, exchange, you get a little bourbon for that. Well, you know, that's right. <laughs> what can I say? This is really something else. Sign up on this link. You'll you'll have a chance to buy the bottle. Again, the price of the uh, Mizunara, I think, is around, is it three fifty? Three forty nine, yeah. So it's not three fifty, Tom. It's it's cheaper. right underneath. There's it's we see every time we can here. We're three forty nine, but 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 obviously um, an incredible an incredible whiskey that only twelve hundred will ever be out there. This is something that's gonna be really treasured in the collector's um, and uh, chest crystal. for uh, for many years to come if, if you if you if you save it for that long and it'll be a way for us to toast to angels in the uh, for many years to celebrate you and your family uh, I hope so. your dad your, you and your dad laid this this barrel down then together uh, no dad um, dad was dad, dad passed away in 2013 right. so that was right about the right time. Right yeah. yeah 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 yeah, excellent. I can't believe it's been seven years since, since Dad passed away. Wow. It's, it's crazy. Well, but this but, is one that you all had always dreamed of together of laying down something with Mizunara. Yeah. It, it, it is. And uh, what a better way to. Uh, Dad, when Dad talked about Japan and his travels to Japan, his, his eyes just lit up. And, you know, a, a funny story about. So, Dad was in Japan doing television interviews about, about bourbon. Right. And they did a translation of his title you know how you know you put a scroll or whatever or you know like a title of the person that they're interviewing and it was lincoln henderson the literal title that the, the japanese title was was uh god of whiskey <laughs> was the translation so i mean after dad saw that he and he, he expected to be addressed and you know as the god of whiskey uh, but uh but that's just that's perfect for dad and his sense of humor you know he got a kick out of it and to this day i laugh my ass off that's <laughs> <laughs> well, an amazing way to bring together the flavors of the Japanese whiskeys he worked on, what you all created together, uh, the innovation of the barrel finish. There's so many elements elements of who Angel's Envy is that come true in this Mizunara cask. I think so. I think so. It's great bourbon, uh, you know, and it, it's 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 creative. It's uh, it's something that that I, I haven't seen much, if any, uh, American whiskey in, in Mizunara. We're starting to see more. You know, here and there, but you know, look. I, years ago, I had a marketing person in our company that 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 we're at a meeting, and I told this person we're going to do a sherry finish, and this person said, "Well, you can't do it. We can't do a sherry finish. You know that 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 uh, somebody else has done it." And I'm like, right. "Well, no, we're going to do our interpretation of a sherry finish." Right. Well, th that that's what it boils down to. You know, fortunately, we we ran her ass out the door. Um, but, um, you know, because it's that type of thinking that, that I can't abide with, um, you know, there it's our interpretation of a sherry finish, our interpretation of a tawny finish, our interpretation of a Mizunura oak finish. And, right. you know, it's, it's our, it's our own artistry. 
is what well, it is. Yeah, it's. I mean, I think what you all have done, especially since there was there had been scotches, mm -hmm. international whiskeys that created these uh, finishes in the past. But what you all have done for the world of American whiskey and bourbon is inspire others and other distilleries to try sherry, to try the cognac rum cast finishes. It's it's really neat to see that, and I think when you you know people say we are an innovator and stuff, and I think we were, and I think we still are, but. Look, we don't wake up in the morning, I don't think, saying, hey, I want to be innovative in, in the bourbon space. You know, we wake up just thinking, OK, we want to make the best whiskey we can. We want to be expressive. We want to do things that keep us engaged and us stimulated. We want to do things that, that further the bourbon industry. Right. And, 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 and through all those things, you end up being innovative. As opposed to waking it up, happens. going to be innovative. Does right. that make sense? It's the other way. You do what you do to exactly. make it amazing. Then it comes. Yeah. Then you become innovative. You become innovative. Yeah. And many people are saying that uh, comments. Um, uh, Duke from Owensboro saying hi to you. Uh, bring one of those bottles. Wow. I, I, I didn't think he was a. I thought his parole officer said he had to be in bed at like nine o'clock. <laughs> so Duke is watching us. We appreciate and, you all watching us. Not using the internet anymore. Good yeah. friend of ours, always watching from Owensboro. It's amazing that Angels and Envy thinks outside uh, the box. Uh, so we thank you for watching that. Um, thank you. Many great friends and continue to like and share this and tell us below uh, what you enjoy about Angels Envy. Um, in, um, so this again will be the the founders collection. Is what it's called. It is, you know, we, we kind of had to, my life is general chaos anyway, but we, we had to come up with some order for how we do things. And, you know, we've got the seller collection, which is a, you know, some limited, we had to figure out a way to kind of put these things in, I don't know, you know, just so the, the marketing people and the accountants right. could, could understand. But, right. Um, the it's, founder's collection is the ultra, is the ultra rare stuff that is the ultra rare, the, the cast strength. Yeah, the cast strength's the different. I mean, our cast strength is every year, um, so that that's a little different. Uh, so we have but, cast you know, strength is rare every year. Found the the um, seller collection. Seller, a little bit more rare. A little more rare. The this is an oversimplification, but the founders collection is like the the off the chart shit like this that rare. you know that like so 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 somewhat rare to really rare to really really seriously rare. Um, how about that? That's excellent stuff. Uh, Duke yeah. wants to remind you. He's uh, Duke reminds you that he's on Central Time, so he hasn't oh, gone to bed good, quite yet. Uh, good for him. Brian, <laughs> Brian, for him. Brian uh, I think it's Minovich, is saying yeah. hello to you. Hey, Brian. And our, uh, our good hey, friend, uh, Mark Brumfield, is also saying hello oh, to you. Oh, what a great – Edrington, man, what a great group. You know, group. Alan and – you know, I'm a huge fan of uh, of Mark. I'm from a huge fan of Mark. Yeah, Mark, uh, and, and what he does, and and what his company does, and uh, my dear friend Nicola, who works for him. That I swear I'm going to steal one of these days because she's the mo one of the most amazing uh, people in whiskey. So, cheers, Mark. Thanks for hollering at me. Great guy, and Nicola's awesome too. It's 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 awesome. I mean, there's so many people that appreciate you, Wes, and your family, and what you all have done for the world of whiskey, and and the passion you bring to it, and. And uh, as you look towards the future beyond the Mizanar cask, are there other uh, innovations or things that you've that you're either working on or that you've that you're dreaming of working on? We have like I think twenty three different uh, innovations in the pipeline right now. You know, I used to talk about them, but um, you know, they, they they kind of they muzzled me a little bit. You know, we're trying to have a little more mystique. But but a lot of these a lot of them are secondary barrel finishes. Some of them involve uh, other unique mash bills, uh, other partnerships with other not just with fortified wines, but other spirits. You know, finishing bourbon and other spirits barrels, uh, different barrel entry proofs. You know, pre pro mash bills, pre pro entry proofs. Any crazy ass idea you can think of, and and this is what what's really been fun is that of, the, of my six boys, you know, four work at the business now. Yeah, and and they're bringing ideas to the table. And, you know, I'm like, you know, my son, Andrew, brought me a great idea or brought a great idea to the table. He's like, Dad, what, what do you think about doing this? I'm like, well, I think it's great. How about you do it? You know, you you take the project. You find the barrels. You know, you 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 know what you want to finish the bourbon in. You source the barrels. I, I want a great story. I want a good partner. So find a find a producer of this. What you like. Find a good producer with a good story, good family lineage. Find the barrels. 
and 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 we we have, and now we filled them with bourbon, and that'll be out in a couple of years. So, um, you know, that's how the process works. You know, and, and now that we're bigger, there actually has to be a process before there really wasn't. Um, you know, now you have a so now so about about twenty five experiments that you have going on. Yeah, right? Twenty three, but yeah, give or take. Who knows? From yeah. wine barrels to other spirits, all kinds. Other mash bills, other other barrel entry proofs. Um, you know, uh, stuff from all around the world. Right. Some of it will really blow your mind. When you say mash bills, of course, you have your bourbon, your rye, some of your other uh, rarities. But will, will we maybe even see some other mash bills coming from you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, I've kind of uh, I was never a big wheat, uh, wheat bourbon fan. And I, we've been playing with wheat a little bit, which I love. I, I just had the uh, Brown Foreman uh, wheat, wheat bourbon which uh, or, or weeded whiskey rather wheat whiskey and um it's not weeded bourbon it's it's weeded whiskey or wheat whiskey which is phenomenal uh it uh i sent a note to chris morris how great i thought it was so you know those are things that i was never a fan before i'm like eh, my son andrews really wanted to do it so that's just an example of stuff that we're, we're messing around with a lot of different mash bills, a lot of different finishes. We'll be excited to, to bring you those on Bourbon Blog in the future. Another nice a note from uh, one of the members of the Bourbon Mafia, Josh Dugan. Uh, Facebook reminded me today, it was seven years ago today that we had an Angels Envy dinner with the Bourbon Mafia with your dad and Kyle. Mm -hmm. Special night. He says he still covets his Lincoln signed stave from that night. Yeah, that was a great night with the Bourbon Mafia, and they're all dear friends. Talk about a really amazing charitable organization, not just a group of, of guys that love bourbon but do great things. And and that dinner was um, – Dad passed away in September. Dad passed away like three weeks later. Oh, man. And that was one of his last – it was not one of his. It was his last public event that he did. He was really weak, and, you know – very emotional thing for me. And, and, you know, I, I wanted dad to talk to the group and dad talked to the group for a minute, but he's like, no, this is, this is your story. You tell the story, you know, this is, you created this brand and, you know, it's, and it's, it's typical dad, you know, dad giving all the glory, you know, away to somebody else. And, and, um, but that was kind of one of those past the mic moments, right? You know, you know, Dad's like, hey, you got this, you know, I, I mean, I think dad knew his time was short, you know, you, you've started this thing, you know what you're doing, you know, I'm going to step back. Here's the mic, you pick it up from here. And, uh, and that, that dinner was very, uh, you know, it was a very seminal moment, you know, in the, with the family and with the brand. Great night. Never forget. It's nice to, to have those memories. Duke also, uh, and thanks for sharing that, Wes. Duke also yeah. said the dinner was epic. So uh, it's it's cool when Facebook reminds us of those things and, and how. Yes, because cool. I'd forgotten. I'd right. forgotten. I was with Brian Gelfo today, another bourbon mafia guy having lunch with Gelfo. Yeah, and, and he brought it up also, and then to to realize how impactful that was to so many people um, back then is 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 you know I miss my dad. I really do. We were so lucky to spend some times with uh, you and your dad, and 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 capture the first tasting of, of course, the rye, which we always mention. We enjoyed capturing the first tasting of rye there at Bourbon Classic many years ago, and just uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is amazing. This is or it's <clears throat> incredible. It's very nice. I'm glad you liked it. What else do we want? To, do we want to taste a little? Uh, well, you know what? I poured a little of the original Angel's Envy. Just yeah. to taste next to each other because I'm, I'm yeah, right. had before. Again, this is some of the same. This is the same whiskey, same mash bill as the um, as what we're drinking on the Mizanar. It is same, same around the same age or a uh, little bit. Yeah, close, close. Yeah, yeah close enough for government. Yeah, younger, maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And with the port wine finish, that goes in the port wine for how long? Up to six months. So. As you'll tell right off the bat, there's definitely a huge difference between the the two. But the, one of the most common things is, is you get that really nice mouthfeel. You've got a nice long finish. It's very accessible. I think our bourbon and, and the rye as well is very, it, it's complex. Yes. But it is accessible. And for somebody that's new to bourbon or new to whiskey, it's it's very easy to put this in front of them as an intro, especially the rye, you know, yeah. it's a long barrel finish. 
um, put it in front of them and say, here's your first, you know, introduction into, into bourbon. Is that where you a lot of times will start on a tasting as the rye or do you usually start with the bourbon? Usually start with the bourbon. Right. Um, and then a lot of times I'll go to the, the rye and then I'll, I'll finish with the cask uh, after that. You know, it's kind of a good progression. Plus there's a progression in proof there also, and depending on what your cask, you know, and, and if we have a sherry barrel, a bottle of sherry finish laying around or a bottle of tawny, we'll, we'll sprinkle that in there as well. Right. What is it about the, uh, what you hope that with the, the whiskey that you make uh, before you put it into port, um, other types of finishes. What are you hoping to put on that main canvas that will be picked up from other types of barrels? I think just a, a traditional Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. It's it's a little bit of higher rye with that 18% rye. It's not really a high rye, but a little, a touch higher. Right. A really good balanced whiskey that stands on its own. If it's, if it's shitty beforehand, it's going to be shitty when you put it in a, a finishing barrel or or maybe it'll be a little less shitty, but you, you know what I'm saying. You get right. it. Garbage in, garbage out. And 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 to 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 have a very good balanced and a canvas is a really good good way to describe it, Tom, is you've got a kind of a base painting and then you're taking it to the next level and and, and transforming it into the the next, you know, the, whatever the next version is going to be. But you're starting with the with the uh, a similar base. Though we obviously love the fact that everything you all really do is is a finish, is there ever a chance you may release just a, a bourbon that's not been finished? You know, we've gone around and around about this. Uh, you know, the I think where we've landed now is that Angel's Envy has become so well known for finishing. For that, yes. That if it's in an Angel's Envy bottle, it will be a finished product. Now, when I started this company, the company name of the company is Louisville Distilling Company. Yes. So where you might see those other things would be Louisville Distilling Company release those like a, a bourbon that's not finished. And that I, I knew at the beginning I would want to have another outlet to do that kind of stuff. You know, like if I want to do Captain Crunch flavored vodka or something like that, you know, uh, fin, fin, definitely try to finish that one. That would be never cool. happen. Uh, but the Louisville Distilling Company uh, company and label would be using it. Yeah, it's still in process, that whole concept. But that's likely where you would see something like that. Something like that under the Louisville Distilling Company. Yeah. Um, it's really good. The bourbon we're making downtown now is phenomenal. Yeah. It, yes, it is. Uh, Matthew Quigley saying, got to tour the distillery in Louisville. Great experience. Right, yeah. What's what's happening right now? Are you all doing limited tours? What's 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 mm -hmm. happening? Right now, we're open for retail. And retail. We're doing some we call roundtable tastings. Okay. Um, and home, uh, actual tours, we're not quite there yet. You know, the bourbon, the, all the distillers on the bourbon trail and the Kentucky Distillers Association are working together to find the safest way to get back to open the tours. And, you know, we want to protect the plant, too. I mean, really, the most important thing for everybody here tonight is to keep the flow of whiskey coming. Got to keep that happening. Right. And, and we can't risk, you know, being in a situation where we're losing, you know, half a million dollars a day because we can't produce, you know, because we're not we're not safe or. Um, so we're, we're not in any hurry. I mean, maybe October ish. We may be doing some limited tours, but I mean, like everybody else, Tom, I mean, you know, we're all in flux here. Sure. What the sure. hell is going to happen? <clears throat> just going and just go in and ha get a bottle for retail. You can go in and do some, yep. do some tastings there, the distillery. Again, any other questions for why some great comments and questions. We're so glad people yeah, like the bourbon mafia are, are, are watching tonight uh, definitely ask them down below on Facebook on YouTube or tweet back to us on Twitter and uh, bookmark bourbonblog.com live to make sure that you can uh, keep on following what we do we have a lot of great guests including uh Cohiba cigars tomorrow night some other great things uh, right. throughout the week uh, yeah and just always a lot of fun tastings every night here again also make sure you go to 500 main.angelsnv.com join and again we think it's around midnight tonight that will go, is it midnight that'll go live or tomorrow morning? It said tomorrow. Sometime uh, tomorrow. Be watching Glow on the Facebook, figure out uh, we'll do when it to watch. Because do you predict it'll be, how many minutes do you predict this will be sold out in? Just a few minutes probably. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, and then the answer, by the way, is five barrels is what we ended up with. I five barrels. All right. And it's 97.8 90, um, proof Yeah, uh, is, is where we landed on that. Um, so I'm, I'm getting questions too. Very, it's so nice. I'm going to go back to that one now because I wanted to go back to your original, but I'm going to go back to uh, 
Mizanar. It's this, and I, the more I know the, the Mizanar, the more I get such a beautiful spice on this. I mean, the spices are, are they're bold. They're not overly bold, but the spices are just really um, very complex. It has um, almost this slight kind of like, not real spicy pepper, but kind of a peppery black pepper spice that just, it, but it, it fades into something creamy and sweet. And it just, it hits a lot of places in the palate. It's very, very nice. It's a party in your mouth, man. It really is. Were you were you uh, thieving this and, and thinking about how long do we need to have it in as you as you were tasting oh. it along? What were you what were you getting? What were you thinking about? How did you go about that process of knowing when to release it? We monitored as we went along. I think Kyle and Andrew spent a little more time monitoring it. You know, they they stayed on top of it on a, like a monthly basis, and they'd bring me samples here here and there in between. I often describe this as I, I can't tell you what I'm looking for. Well, I can't tell you what I'm looking for, but I know it when I see it. Um, does that right. make any sense? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we have a base idea of what we're trying to accomplish, but when we finally get there, it's kind of like that, okay, here it is. Boom, we're there. Then you know. Then we go. As far as finishes go, as far as the longest finished whiskey ever with Angels Envy, that would be... Our cask, our 2014 cask was finished for uh, like almost three years or three years in a port barrel, which was, which was three just long enough. Right. It was, I wouldn't have gone any longer than that. Uh, I think it, it almost bordered on too long um because we started getting some sulfur notes out of it. Uh, but I mean, but people consistently say that's one of their favorites. So. They love it. It is what it is. Um, the 12, the first year we did it, the 12 is really kind of the holy grail. Right. Frank was envy. Uh, you know, it's one of those secondary market things you see for three or $4,000, which I think is insane. But, you know, hey, I think it's kind of cool. You know, I, I really do. Um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the secondary market, but um, anybody that says they hate the secondary market, you know, it's like, guess what? The secondary market is why, you know, I mean, it, you, know, you complain about it, but guess what? It's raising your profile. It's raising the, the, it the yeah. visibility of your brands. Um, the downside of it is it makes it harder for people to to buy your stuff, which I don't like. Right. But um, you know, it's, it's the stay, so it is. So many, so many good friends watching tonight. Will Swenson, uh, our good friend, uh, said he loves the Angels Envy and uh, he's obsessed with your rise. So uh, well, no, thanks, Will. I enjoy product a lot so so many so many people enjoying hey, so here's another question uh yeah thanks will thanks everybody for watching keep on telling us what you like uh down below or tweet back uh question from nick nernborn uh hey west great insights have you considered any alternative finishes for the rye yes <laughs> and that's and that's probably about as far as you can go unless there's any other hints you want to give no I can't. That might be happening, though. It sounds like it, it, it might be. And it's funny because I swore up and down that I wouldn't do any others because I, I didn't think we could do any better. You know, I think the rise just, you know, it's just balls on. There's no, you know, it just it, it, it it's it's just damn near perfectly, you know, perfectly constructed. Uh, and, and some of that's luck. Some of it's skill, you know, uh, a lot of it's luck. But the alternative, the other finishes we've looked at doing and, and have played with with the rye are really, really good. I was surprised. Uh, but you have to be open minded. Like I said, the, the rye right now is so unique. And to take the rye to another dimension, you almost got to throw out the, the, the rum finished rye and say, let's just put that. That's almost its own category anyway. You know, that's so unique. It's almost its own thing. It's really right. almost not even a rye. You know, it's you, such a different spirit all on its own. I mean, that's right. When people taste it; they it's, it can go so many directions. Right. So other finishes, you 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 get more of the rye aspect to it. So it's a different it's a different journey. You know, same same train, different journey. Again, and the rye is how many years rye, and then how many years is it? Eight going? years on the rye, and then uh, up to two years finished in the rum barrel. Up to two. Kind of a variation, but up to two. Up to two, and then the blending, you know, where, you know, where the blending is the is the is the the key, and you know, we blend for that consistency. But even though we, we these are small batches compared to the big guys, there are fluctuations in that taste profile from from batch to batch. It's not extreme, 
But, um, you know, I, I will tell you, though, that this last batch of rye um, is more of a throwback, I think, to the earlier rye that we did. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, we get some drift here and there, and sometimes it's good to dial it back in. And I think that with this last release of the rye, we kind of dialed it back into the, or some of the earlier versions. And is that is that is that intentional or is it actually just kind of what happens through the process? That was this time it was intentional. That was intentional. Um, what? It, how it did you dial it back? What were you doing? What were you looking in the, for? In the blending, I mean, you know, you along the way, what you're doing is you're keeping reference samples of each right. blend, and 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 you know, but you have to re go. You have to go back and recalibrate, and, and sometimes you can get drift if you're not taking a look at, at the samples often enough, and even your control samples will start to drift after a while. So, um, so sometimes it's necessary to, to do a little course correction or dial back or, or hell, we can do whatever we want to do. You know, I mean, it, it, it's, a, but that, that's the journey. You know, that's, that's not, that's our journey together, you know, as, as consumers of the rye and, and, you know, and, 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 and who wants to, who wants to see the same scenery all the time? Yeah. I mean, we want it to be the rye where we all grew up and loved and, you know, it's familiar, but within those confines, you know, why not play around a little bit? Absolutely. And and um, I actually just poured a little of the, the most recent rye. And it, it is, um, I see what you're saying. I mean, it, I don't know if it's just a mental thing, but some of those same notes that I remember on the original rye, yep. I do get some of those really beautiful sugar uh, cane almost from that rum. Exactly. Uh, beautiful yeah. notes right off the top. Um, what it, Somebody's asking, uh, Where's your, where's your favorite place to enjoy whiskey when it comes to actually just sitting back and enjoying a, a rye or whatever it might be? Is there a favorite place in Kentucky that you would like to? Wow. I have different favors. You know, I, I, I kind of live out in the country. I like my front porch. You right. know, I mean, I got the deer in the front yard. It's just kind of that that rural Kentucky setting. Uh, uh, you know, also like, um, I'm like blessed to go to some of the best bars. In, in the world, you know, I uh, I love rooftop bars. Oh yeah, that's my yeah, thing. good ones there in Louisville too. There are there, and there weren't for forever. In the last few years, we've had some. Uh, my most recent experience was, you know, drinking bourbon out, uh, not really the outback, but in Australia. Yeah. It was in, out, in, in in a almost like a camping session in, in uh, Sydney, Australia. Now I'm thinking, I'm I'm thinking, holy shit, you know, how far have we come? to where we're launching our brand in Sydney and Melbourne. And I'm sitting in Sydney, you know, drinking with some of the top bartenders in, in the world in Sydney. And um, it was, it was another one of those wow moments where you just sit back and you, you know, and, and you know, I think of it is Tom, you know, you, you guys know me, I'm long winded anyway, but um, we're so busy building a brand and building a business that n not often enough, and everybody's like this in life, I think, you know, not often enough do you take a breath and just sit back and say, oh, wow, you know, instead of thinking about the next thing you have to do, you know, or the next fire you have to put out, you know, it's living in the moment. And I'm trying to do more of that um, lately. And especially now with all of us with COVID, I mean, you know, we're, we're, a lot of us have reassessed a lot of stuff, but you know, my reassessment is I'm going to enjoy more of those in the moment moments. Um, it's so important to do that. I, I think that's so well said, Wes, to enjoy that uh, that whiskey that maybe we haven't cracked open from all those moments. We just got to, yeah. we have to treasure those. We really yeah. do. You know, and I'm fond of saying, you might have heard me say it, that, that the, the most lonely thing to me is a bo unopened bottle of bourbon or whiskey on a shelf. <laughs> um, because there are so many stories inside that bottle to be told that if you just crack it open with friends and family or, or whatever, and, and, you know, it, it stimulates that conversation. So, you know, it's kind of a wasted, wasted moment. Right. Right. It's important to, uh, and we know that so well too, to keep, uh, it's hard to find ones that haven't been cracked around me. So. Drink that stuff, man. I'll, <laughs> sign, I'll find another bottle for you. It's all good. <laughs> we can, we can sign another. That's right. Some people get, and I understand why they do. They're like, I don't want to crack that bottle, but we'll get it get, time. I'm the same way. You know, yeah. a lot of times I'll get two bottles of something. You know, Bill Samuels today. Yeah. And and had a spent an afternoon with Bill, which to me, every every opportunity I get to spend with Bill is precious. 
and, and with Rob as well. But, you know, I was talking, I was fanboying to, to Bill, you know, about my bottle of Maker's Cast Strength that, you know, 375 that he signed for me. You know, that's, you know, I mean, I'll never open that thing. Right. Uh, but I have another one that I did open. And, uh, you know, so you know, I still fanboy over over people in this industry. You know, Bill's one, Jimmy Russell's another, you know, and, and those are the two really kind of legends from my dad's generation that are still around, unfortunately. Right. right. <clears throat> so many great people in the industry. And Wes, you're certainly one of our favorites. And you've done so much uh, for, absolutely, for the business and for the industry. And, and it's exciting to try this a new Mizanara. And uh, I saw a few people asking that had just joined again. Uh, the one way to get this bottle, uh, until hopefully maybe you find a friend that has one that they'll pour you a sip up, is to log on uh, tonight to 500 Main angelsnb.com forward slash join the way it's done right there and uh, become a member. And then that way you can actually right when it goes on sale tomorrow, uh, purchase a bottle, get mm -hmm. your bottle, uh, pick it up in Louisville. And for, if for some reason, obviously you don't get one uh, that you've got other bottles there that you're selling with the distillery. People can pick up, right? Of course. Yeah. We've got great tons stuff. of great stuff there and exciting stuff. We might have a few bottles of the tawny finish laying around. Wow. But if you, you know, if you ask nicely, they might figure out how to get them. Um, yeah, it, it, come and see us. We'd love to see you. I, I'm, I'm really excited to, you know, get back out in the field. If, until I get back in the field, right? please come. Uh, would love to have you. And, and also, I'm thinking about it. Uh, follow me uh, on Twitter or Instagram. Yeah, I'll put that there. At yeah. KY Bourbon Maker. At KY Bourbon yes. Maker. Please don't I ask me how you can get a bottle of the Mizanura Oak because... Um, I'm going to lose my shit probably the next time. <laughs> just tease. I, I'm, I'm, I am so blessed and flattered and honored that people care enough about what we do, you know, to try to get our stuff. But um, this one's been a tough ticket, man. I'll tell you right now, it, it's, it's a real tough ticket to get, but I'd love to hear from you. Send me pictures of your dogs and cats and, you know, we'll. Uh, pose we'll pose uh, those with a bottle of angels envy too. That's oh yeah. Nice. Oh, and guess what's coming up in September. Toast the tree. Oh, totally. What is yeah. it? Toast the Trees, um, coming up in September. It's nice. the month of September is Toast the Trees. So for every hashtag Toast the Trees and a picture of Angel's Envy, we plant an oak tree. And nice. we did like 30,000 some odd last year, I think, more. Uh, but that starts September 1st. So Toast the Trees and, uh, you know. Uh, I remember you guys. Now, is that just on Instagram or is it on all social media? All, all social media platforms. So we've got an aggregator that searches for all of them. So any hashtag Toast the Trees. And then, uh, and then post a picture of, of a cocktail or, you know, hell, you, you don't have to get out of bed in the morning. You can plant a tree. Dude, just toast the trees. Um, yeah. How many, do you remember how many last year you guys got? You guys got a lot, I remember. 5,000 or something like that, I think, wow. last year. And we're planting these trees, uh, you know, in deforested areas. And most of the, the last ones are going into the Daniel Boone National Forest in eastern Kentucky in areas where there's been uh, strip mining, uh, deforestation. So it's a real deal. And it takes 80 years to, you know, for a tree to mature long enough to make a barrel out of it. So we're, and we're also going to be planting trees out in our Henry County property that we'll use for barrels. I won't see them. They eventually will be at some. Yeah. I won't see them. Um, my, my kids won't see them probably, but the, my grandchildren, you know, should, should hopefully be able to see them. And how long does that take? Wait, 70 years. I mean, it can be. Seven years. Years. Yeah. The oh, Japanese Oak, 200 years. So ain't and nobody seeing one that. Of those will be a really long time. Yeah. yeah exactly. But so that, toast the trees, take a picture in September, a, a bottle, a cocktail, something like that. They'll plant a tree for every hashtag. Right. That's exciting. We'll have to have you back in September to uh well maybe yeah, maybe, we'll do that. maybe I'll maybe I'll talk with you with a glass of angels and be under a tree next time. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great idea. And and it, you know, I, I tell you what, Tom, I appreciate you letting me plug it. Uh, and it's going to be interesting this year because of the shift in drinking habits because of COVID. Um, a lot of this we were depending on for people in bars and restaurants yeah. to post. So we're going to have to rethink how we do it. So ha to have an opportunity, even if it's 15 minutes, to talk about it sure. next month would be great. Oh, no, we'd, we'd love to do that with you, Wes. Thank you. And, and as we as we look towards the future, I mean, I know I asked you this a few months back. What we had, it might have been three months ago because we've been doing this bourbon blog live show for about five months now. But whenever I first had you on, you know, We've talked about looking towards the future. The effects, uh, obviously, are, are very serious for our industry. But what, what are you thinking as far as the effects of COVID, 
whether it's the, your distillery, the industry in general, however you want to answer that. And our partners in the hospitality industry are really getting hurt the worst. You know, if you're a server or a bartender or work in this, you know, in the hospitality industry, they've taken it probably harder than anyone. Right. So we're going to do what we can to help recover that that part of, of our business. Uh, I think some drinking habits are going to change. I really do. Um, uh, pe people are drinking at home now because they can't drink in bars and restaurants. But some of those habits may continue. Um, uh, are ready to drink cocktails. Uh, uh, E-commerce is really exploding for spirits now. And, and COVID has is, 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 uh, accelerated a lot of those things. And, you know, hopefully we can just, like everybody else, we get back to normal here and, you know, resume a life that, that resembled what we ha had before. Uh, and I think the industry will recover. I really do. Unfortunately, there will be some businesses that in, uh, and, and that won't recover, um, which is really sad. It really is. But uh, we're going to do our best to help them get, them get their way back. It's good of you. You guys are doing great work. We appreciate you so much uh, being on tonight on Bourbon Block Live, trying the new Mizanara. Goes on sale tomorrow, and uh, it'll be exciting to hear about people. What, were they, they going to pick it up next week, or how soon will they pick it up? Any idea? I don't know. At some uh, point, whatever they want. They it, it gave me, in all fairness, well, this bank probably makes me look even worse. No, go ahead. <laughs> The marketing team gave me like a list of, of, of all this information on it. And Don't worry. normally I remember all this stuff and have it in, in my head, but uh, we're not, we're not bottling it. We still haven't bottled all of it yet. So it's going okay. to be yeah closer to the, I think the first week of September or something like that before you can pick them up or the very end of August. Um, but you've got some time to, you know, order it and we're going to hold them for several months. So just because you buy it now, you, you can pick it up. You know, in, in October, you'll have, yeah, you'll have hold on to it for him. Well, it'll be soon. It'll be exciting. It we'll, 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 we'll be watching. He'll hold it. He'll be holding it. Hold it for you. And then once you pick up your bottle from Wes and Louisville Distilling Company, you can hashtag the toast the trees. Mm -hmm. They'll plant a tree. We're going to keep this video up permanently on both of our YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and also we'll put the audio up. I hope everyone watching is already following our podcast because oh, we. Great. Well, this lives on. I mean, the, the, this lives on. You mean? I mean, it lives on. Like, like, uh, maybe man. as long as those trees do, it's possible. It's like, it's like luggage. You know, you just you, you never get rid of it. It's like luggage. It's always up there on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and our podcast channel. The audio. If you just want to listen to it um, as you're drinking the whiskey, subscribe to our podcast channel, Anchor FM forward slash Bourbon Blog. We have a lot of great uh, interviews with distillers like Wes. And uh, we always like to have more subscribers there. Uh, and definitely, uh, again, follow Wes because he always puts some great stuff up on Angel's Envy and what he's up to. Mm -hmm. KY Bourbon Maker. That's on Twitter and Instagram, right? That's right. Yep. Follow him. Tag him. Tag that whole uh, Toast the Trees and get a bottle of this Mizanara or one of the wonderful um, Angel's Envy. It's so great to see you, my friend. I hope to see you. Uh, it's always fun. And in I'm the near future in person. Appreciate you. Absolutely. And I appreciate the great questions and, and all the kind of words uh, yeah. from our friends out there. It's uh, yeah. uh, I'm very thankful. Wake up every morning grateful <laughs> that I get to do what I like to do and people actually care enough to support us. So we're you're, and, and Tom and I say I say this usually every time we talk, but um, what you've done to elevate the, the, the bourbon industry is very much appreciated. And we're very fortunate to have someone that has your passion and uh, it gives us a platform to talk about what we do. So thank you very much. It's my, my pleasure, Wes. Thank you so much. It means a lot, my friend. It's always a pleasure uh, to interview you and to chat with you, have a drink with you, and to get all the Angels Envy fans that come and enjoy this because it's really – Angels Envy has really brought a community together. A glass of whiskey. So cheers, Wes. Cheers. cheers to our friends watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Yeah.